Now, there is one topic that I like to talk on once in a great while. And I don't usually talk about this much because there is so much controversy. But I would like to kind of straighten this out for everyone. And it has to do with not only gay marriage, but being gay. The, the problem is within your culture and with your tribal attributes, and everything that pertains to you and who you are when it comes to your sexual orientation and it really doesn't matter because the fact is it is your choice on how you want to live. It's not mine. It's not your next door neighbor's. It is your choice. But there is one major thing that everybody does is they advertise their sexual preference. Now, Somebody that's straight doesn't go around all the time and say, I'm coming out, I'm straight. You know, sexual orientation is irrelevant. And especially when it comes to business. That's the big one now. Is the preferences of people, once they find out your sexual preference, they will not acknowledge you or your preference of gender. It's like the big controversy was a lot of these businesses that provide a service. Like they make a cake. They could clean your house. They could even fix your heating system and cooling system. If they say they're not going to take and service or provide what they make or produce to anyone that they say that they don't like the way they live or their sexual preference is wrong. Because it's irrelevant. You are in business to provide a service or a product to whoever comes in the door. So that means if you have to turn down anyone that you don't like a sexual preference by, that means whoever comes in that is straight and has a husband and wife and ten kids, you can't serve them because they have ten kids. This is what really makes me upset is whoever their sexual preference is, is irrelevant. You provide a service, provide the service. Make the cake. Now, if it takes special decorations, and it takes something special to make that cake, you can charge more. And they'll say, why is it more? Well, we have to make something special for your cake. So that means that we have to charge you at least whatever they, whatever above what the normal price that we would charge because it's a special order. And it has to be prepaid before it's made because it is a special order. So... And everybody don't realize that it's irrelevant. Their sexual preference is irrelevant. Provide the service that you provide to everyone. Now, the next problem 
is if you are considered yourself a Christian and you don't believe in gay marriage, you're still irrelevant. Now the next problem and the next solution to the problem is, get this, now you really have to pay attention because our job as Christians, as believers, okay, our job is to teach and preach salvation, not to judge people. When you tell them you can't make a cake because they're gay, that means you are their judge. You are judging them on how they live. It's not our job to do that. It's God's job to do that. It's just not our job. Our job is to teach and preach salvation to get them saved. And then God's job to change them from within. It's not our judge to judge them from without. You know what I mean? You know, their appearance, what they live, what they do. We do not, it's not our judge to judge them to judge anyone. Our job is to teach and preach salvation unto the entire world. Not to judge them on how they live or what they do or even who they marry. It's irrelevant. It's not our job. It's not even in the description of a Christian. The description of a Christian is salvation. We live in two worlds. We live in a physical world, and we live in a spiritual world. Christians live in a spiritual world. So what do we teach? Spiritual things. It would be the same idea as if you had a big church, and the people coming through the door, this, this woman come in with a halter top and skinny little... Um, what do you call them, um, shorts, and the guy with her had just shorts on, nothing else. Would you let them in the door? Aha! If you say no, that means you're judging them people by their appearance. That means you're judging them. It's not your job to judge them on how they are, or who they live, or, or even what they wear. It's irrelevant. Have them come in and sit down. If two guys come in holding hands, you escort them down and you set them in the pew. Two women, same thing. It's irrelevant. It's not our place to judge how they live or anything about them. It's God's job once we get them saved, and it's God's job to change them from within. So that means once they are changed from within, over time, what's inside comes out. All of a sudden, six months later, you see that same person, single, or with the opposite sex. You had done nothing because it wasn't your job. And this is what the controversy a lot of things is, is a lot of the people consider themselves Christians and they judge them on how they live and who they marry and, and what they drive and, oh, you know, you're trailer trash because you live in a trailer park. Well, does that make you any better than if you lived in a mansion? And ate fish and all kinds of stuff that's expensive. Well, if you can afford to eat it, eat it. Hey, they have hamburgers and hot dogs. They ate. 
That was the whole thing. They have a roof over their head. They are warm. They have water. They have heat. They have food. What makes them any better than you? They're not. The only difference is, is where they live and how they live. It's not our judge to judge them. Our job is to get them saved. Because as Christians, we live in a spiritual world. And we teach in a spiritual world. So therefore, when you see all these people... You don't judge them for who they are, or what they are, or even who they have become. You talk about spiritual things. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus? The best one is I try to tell some people, I go, it's we live within God himself. And they're looking at me strange and going, what? I says, because we live in God himself, he can keep our essentials of life working. So that means all the planets, the earth itself, because we live in God himself, he watches over us. And this is why science can't find him because we live inside of him. How can you find something if you're living inside of it? It's like having a loaf of bread. What's inside of a loaf of bread? Bread. Well, what do you see when you're inside the loaf of bread? Bread. Can you see the outside of the bread? No. Can you see outside of the loaf that you're in? No. You're inside the loaf of bread. Because you live inside the loaf of bread, that's all you know is what's inside. You can't see outside. So this is our earth, but we can look out into space and see God. We can't see all of God, but we can see inside of God what he has placed there for us to see. Wow, that's a concept. He gave us day and night. The planet we are on was created by him, within him. Everything we see the air we breathe, the food we eat, everything was created for us to live here. Now the big question was why? Because God has consciousness. Therefore, he wanted to share his consciousness with other beings. So he created the planets he created Earth and put life on the planet. Now, there is a difference between conscience and consciousness. If you close your eyes, you're conscious. You're conscious. If you close your eyes, you're conscious. If you open your eyes, you have consciousness because you can see where you're at and determine what you need to provide to survive. If you're only conscious, that means that you, you are aware of being alive. That's it. You're aware of being alive. Now, once you open your eyes and determine where you're at, you have consciousness. And this is what sh that God wanted to share with us was his conscience which turned into our consciousness of him because 
we are created in his image. Now, I could go into a lot of things beyond this, but basically, it God wanted to share his consciousness with us. So that's why we're here. I don't care what anybody else told you or the scientists or whatever, it's irrelevant. Because we have consciousness and we live within God himself, he provides our needs. Now, the key is once we understand that we live within God and once we get saved, God will live within us. You wouldn't believe how many people that didn't understand what I just said. I'm going to leave you with that. If you want to listen to this again, just push play again and listen to it.